Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear viewers, welcome to a new episode of The Quran and Science. This is your host, Tamir Mumtaz, and welcoming our dear professor, Dr. Zaghlul Nagar, Head of Committee on Scientific Facts in the Glorious Quran, Supreme Council on Islamic Affairs, welcoming our dear guests, Brother Fuad and Brother Mustafa. And in this episode, we'll talk about reduction of the earth. But first, we'll listen to a recitation of the verse that deals with our topic today from Surat Ar-Rahd, verse number 41. <laughs> Do they not see how we diminish the earth from its borders? Professor Zaghloul, yes. is the earth being reduced? Yes. <laughs> I begin with thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most compassionate, the most merciful, the Lord of the universe, the master of everything and of everybody, the soul supreme being without parallels, partners or similitudes and seek his blessings on Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him yeah, the end so of so that so long so. chain of prophets and messengers for the guidance of man sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and I greet you all uh, in, and your audience in our Islamic way Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh may Allah's peace, blessings and mercy be with you all we read in the glorious Quran two verses that spell out a scientific fact that was not known until late in the 20th century. In Surah al Ra'd, the Quran reads, أَفَلَا يَرَوْنَ أَنَّا نَأْتِ الْأَرْضَ نَنْقُصُهَا مِنْ أَطْرَافِهَا وَاللَّهُ يَحْكُمُ لَا مُعَقِّبَ لِحُكْمِهِ وَهُوَ سَرِيعُ الْحِسَابِ Do not the unbelievers see that Allah uh, has caused the earth to uh, shrink from all its peripheries. We get to the earth and cause it to shrink from all its peripheries. And Allah rules over everything. And his ruling cannot be negated. His ruling cannot be objected to. Nobody can comment on his ruling. And he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, all glory be to him, is the most swift in calling for account. The other verse uh, also comes in the same context and reads, أَفَلَا يَرَوْنَ أَنَّا نَأْتِ الْأَرْضَ نَنْقُصُهَا مِنْ أَطْرَافِهَا and this comes in Surah Al-Anbiya, verse number 44. Early commentators couldn't grasp how could the earth be reduced from its peripheries. They couldn't think of the possibility that the earth is being reduced from its peripheries. So they took uh, these two verses in the context of a parable, an example, uh, in a met metaphoric way, um, expressing the death of scholars. And whenever scholars die en masse, uh, life on the surface of that planet become highly disturbed. And an early uh, poet used to say, يَا عُلَمَاءَ الدِّينِ يَا مِلْحَ الْبَلَدْ مَنْ يُصْلِحُ النَّاسَ إِذَا الْمِلْحُ فَسَدْ O scholars of religion, you are the salt of life. What can uh, rectify people if the salt of life has been lost or has been destroyed? So they reflected on the mass death of scholars. And this is a bad sign that shows the unpleasance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah is, is displeased with his own creation. Allah is not happy with the mischief of man on earth. Uh, so they said that it may reflect on the mass death of scholars, which may be absolutely true. 
and I have no objection against that at all. And uh, other commentators said it may reflect on the reduction of the land of the disbelievers and the unbelievers, the atheists and the agnostics, and uh, the expansion of the land of Islam, or uh, vice versa. It can mean uh, the attack on Islam and the reduction of the area of Islam, as we see it witnessing today. And this meaning is also well accepted, uh, well accepted. But as a scientist, I started to look at these two verses from a different point of view. And I repeat what I have said earlier, that when a Quranic verse comes in the context of uh, giving a metaphor or giving a parable, uh, still it remains scientifically absolutely correct because this is the word of the Creator in its divine purity. So as a scientist, I start to look at this, uh, uh, these two verses. What does it mean? And I immediately, or immediately came to my mind that uh, there is a geologic principle that's called peneplanation. And peneplanation means uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows erosional processes to denude high peaks of mountains, to reduce mountains and change them into flat areas. And we have a cycle between uh, a continent and an ocean, or between a plain and a mountainous area. And this is part of the cycles of which we observe on Earth. And this is well accepted, that we all accept the idea that uh, the various erosive processes wind, running water, uh, glaciation, uh, plants, gravity, uh, animals, all this can erode uh, massive quantities of rocks as soil, which uh, makes life uh, much easier on the surface of that planet, and at the same time reduce highly raised areas into plateaus, into hillocks, into plains, until it has been almost level to the sea level always coming to the sea level. And this is a cycle. They call it the geomorphologic cycle, the cycle of the change of the shapes of, of, uh, uh, of the outer part of the earth. But also I came to realize that uh, the earth as a planet, it spins around its own axis. And as a, as a result of this spinning, um, it bulges slightly at the equator, and flattened slightly at the two poles. And nowadays we know that the difference between the polar axis and the equatorial axis is about 43 kilometers. And this is a continuous process that has changed the sphere into a semi-ellipse uh, or a subsphere. And this is also can be taken to define uh, the uh, meaning gained by, two, by these two verses. Having they seen that we get to the earth and reduce it from its peripheries. Or can't they see that we get to the earth and reduce it from its peripheries? Or are they the more victorious? Are they the more challenging? Also, we could see that um, in many cases, uh, oceanic water can encroach on land and can reduce the surface of the continental mass. Um, and this would be a way of reducing the Earth from its peripheries. Uh, recently, a concept in geology called the plate tectonics tells us that oceans spread at their axes. And as a result of this spreading, the oceanic bottom goes under uh, this content in this way and that content in that way. And as it goes down, it partially melts. Uh, it, and of course, this would be a way of reducing the earth from its peripheries. But the most um, convincing idea I could reach to is that I have found that the primitive earth was at least 200 times the volume of our current earth. 
Uh, in another episode, we mentioned that the proto-earth started by a heap of ash. Mm. And naturally, this heap of ash would be much lighter and much greater in volume. By the impact of, of iron meteorites and iron and stony meteorites that uh, penetrated that heap of ash and settled in the core of the earth and melted that heap of ash into seven earths, of course, this would mean reduction of the earth from its peripheries and a reflection on an unseen phase in the ancient history of the earth. Not only this, but I have also found that in as much as the sun is losing from its energy uh, in the form, uh, or losing from its mass in the form of energy, uh, 4.6 million tons every second to keep the distance between the earth and the sun constant so that we uh, to, so that to keep the amount of energy reaching the earth the earth has to lose a certain a relative uh, proportion to what the sun is losing and the earth loses this amount through its volcanic vents every volcanic eruption can lead to the escaping of uh, uh, light gases, uh, the escape of uh, some light uh, solids, flakes of ash or, or flakes of carbon, and this would be lost to, the, to outer space and can keep the balance between the total mass of the sun uh, at any moment relative to the total mass of the Earth. These facts were completely unraveled, completely unknown at the time of the revelation of the glorious Quran, or even for many, many centuries after the revelation of the Holy Quran. And for the, this holy book, this glorious uh, book, this illustrious book, to spell that out clearly in two different verses, in two different surahs or chapters, is a testimony that the Quran cannot be the work of man, but it is the word of the Creator in its divine purity and can also testify to the divine uh, prophethood of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Dr. Zarul, yeah. uh, it, it's, it's mentioned in the Quran twice, and, and that's not, uh, we don't see that much uh, phenomena that is mentioned twice in the Quran, or maybe yes. uh, uh, probably once, but is there any significance about uh, mentioning it twice? Um, probably to give two different meanings that mm -hmm. also can integrate. If one meaning is not obvious in, in one verse, right. the second meaning may reflect on it in a better way. Mm -hmm. So, for example, in the verse in Surah Al-Anbiya, the Quran reads, أَفَلَا يَرَوْنَ أَنَّا نَأْتِي الْأَرْضَ نَنْقُصُهَا مِنْ أَطْرَافِهَا أَفَهُمُ الْغَالِبُونَ Can't they see that we get to the earth and reduce it from its peripheries? Can they be the victorious? Can they uh, really uh, achieve victory against the Creator? Oh, All man. glory be to Him. Man. Of course, it's impossible. It's not. <laughs> and here it may uh, signify uh, the divine decision to punish aggressors mm -hmm. by reducing their own lands or to reward uh, true believers mm -hmm. by expanding their own lands. Uh, or vice versa, Allah can try true believers by subject them, subject them to a trial of, one, of some kind, you see. Mm. And as much as he can try ill doers by giving them opportunity over opportunity. Mm -hmm. So here it, it conveys that meaning more. Yes. Mm -hmm. In uh, Surah al rad uh, the verse reads, أَفَلَا يَرَوْنَا أَنَّا نَأْتِ الْأَرْضَ نُقُصُهَا مِنْ أَطْرَافِهَا أَفَلَا يَرَوْنَا أَنَّا نَأْتِ الْأَرْضَ نُقُصُهَا مِنْ أَطْرَافِهَا وَاللَّهُ يَحْكُمُ لَا مُعَقِّبَ لِحُكْمِهِ وَهُوَ سَرِيعُ الْحِسَابِ mm -hmm. uh, And uh, of course here we can get another meaning which we can discuss after, after the break, break. inshallah. Okay, thank you Professor Zaglul. Wait for us and we'll be together after the break. Thank you. Huda TV strives to bring you, our viewers, the best in Islamic programming. Please send your comments and suggestions to feedback at huda.tv.
welcome back, Professor Zaghloul. And we were discussing why it was mentioned in two different areas. Yes. Uh, as I was saying uh, a few moments ago, when uh, something is repeated in the glorious Quran, and actually there is a whole science called repetition in the Holy Quran. Mm -hmm. This is a, a whole science by itself. But uh, I could see from the cosmic verses if uh, an idea has been repeated twice, uh, this is a way of giving um, two different meanings to the verse mm -hmm. so that these two meanings can integrate, can mm -hmm. uh, complete each other. You mean, you mean it can be good for the past and the present? Definitely. Yes, that's what Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, the matter of being good for <coughs> past and the present can be seen in the single verse. Mm -hmm. You see, as, as we have given exam many verse, examples yes. before. Right. Mm -hmm. But of course, to get it at the same time in two different places, right. uh, this would make it easy for the reader of the Holy Quran mm -hmm. to grasp the many ideas that can be understood from each verse and integrate them together to get the meaning. So the... Uh, you mentioned before that one cosmic verse was mentioned more than 20 times. Yes, uh, yes. I think the verse about... Uh, uh, ardu ma ardu, yes. 20 times. Mm. And of course, because it is, first of all, emphasizing a very important issue mm. in our existence. And at the same time, see, in every case, it will carry a slightly different meaning. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if you integrate these meanings... Of course, you get the, a better the whole understanding idea. of the whole idea. different yeah. approaches, for example. Oh, yes, different perspectives approach. from yes. one verse. Yeah. Yes. My doc, uh, my question, doctor. Uh, the reducing of the Earth, can it be measured, for example, from the uh, latitudinal uh, uh, diameter or the longitudinal diameter? If something is reduced, it means it's it's uh, shrinking and it's becoming smaller. Dimensions can it be are changing. But you see, this happens as a very slow process yeah. so that it wouldn't disturb life on earth. Okay. Yeah. So we cannot observe mm -hmm. it in our own lifetime. Okay. But the whole idea, which we mentioned in another episode, that the earth, uh, when it was separated from the sun, it was no more than a heap of ash. Yeah. And ash being light, then the more volume of the, of the earth, of the proto-earth, must have been much, much greater than its present day volume. And this has led scientists to conclude that the proto-Earth was at least 200 times the volume of the present Earth. So this is an issue by itself yeah. so that could explain these, these two verses. Once you have changed a heap of ash into a solid mass, you have reduced its volume. And it's a sign of the uh, wisdom and, and, and uh, uh, logic and... Uh, uh, power and might of the Creator. And this ah. also shows that mm -hmm. a, a system must be in place that is not man-made because mm -hmm. uh, as we discussed earlier also, the iron coming down, the, the, the uh, making, uh, as you said, one was 90 tons of, of pure iron. Yes. This would definitely increase the size of the earth. Yes. But uh, <laughs> with all of this, it's still reducing. So th this system can never be man-made. Yes. Yes, indeed. Man indeed. cannot even make a <laughs> mosquito or a fly. <laughs> the wing of a fly. The <laughs> wing of a fly. <laughs> also, doctor, it could be also, uh, don't you think it could signify a kind of a punishment for those who are not following or those who are not yes. well, believing it, it or something? Well, it means that. Could be. It, it yeah. carries, carries that meaning. Uh -huh. Because in, in Surah al Rat, right. the verse reads, أَفَلَا يَرَوْنَ أَنَّا نَأْتِ الْأَرْضَ yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it conveys that any mm -hmm. ill doers on earth will be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. And all good doers on earth will be amply rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, uh, even on the day of reckoning, on the day of account, right. of course the situation will be even uh, much more uh, difficult and much yes. more severe than what we, have, we see in this life. Mm. And it can also convey uh, the defeat of the enemies or the uh, victory of the Muslims at, or the other way around. Mm. If Muslims go astray and are not committed to their religion, Allah can punish them mm. by reducing their own land. And that's happened, in, uh, for instance, in Spain. We lost Spain that after... 
800, yeah. 800 years, eight yeah. centuries. Yeah. India. Uh, and a uh, yes. uh, big yeah. part yeah. of the land right. here. Yes. Yes. Uh, exactly. Yeah. But professor, in every episode, in every mm -hmm. cosmic verse, uh, we have learned that the thing that happens is mainly to, for the preservation and protection of the earth. For example, uh, the stars, you said they're like uh, hooks and the mountains there. So uh, what is the significance of reduction of the earth uh, for, the, for the protection of the planet? Uh, As I said, <coughs> the most uh, important thing to be gained by reducing the earth uh, in mass and in volume in mass and in volume, mm -hmm. is to keep uh, a steady distance between the Earth and the Sun. Because this distance, mm -hmm. if it was changed well, by a fraction of a kilometer towards the Sun, would be burnt. And if it was changed by sending us away from the Sun, would freeze. And all forms of life around us will also freeze. And that's why you, sometimes we cannot bear the heat of the summer or cannot bear the cold of the winter just because something comes to intervene between us and the sun. So imagine if we were drifted slightly towards the sun, mm -hmm. the whole thing would be, would be finished. But the verse mentions that the earth is being reduced. It doesn't mention that there is a makeup for this reduction. No, there is no makeup because there is no, no reverse process. Okay. There is no reverse process. So we're in a continuous process of a reduction? Continuous process of reduction, yes. Yeah. So this means that we're... Uh, we're continuously being farther from the sun, brought farther from the sun? Brought further? No, we cannot go further from the, from the sun. Because as a, the whole idea of reducing the earth from its peripheries is to keep the distance fixed yeah. mm -hmm. so, so that you can uh, uh, receive a definite amount of solar energy. But how can, it, uh, how can we keep it fixed? Uh, not, not we, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm very yeah. sorry for yeah. that. Yes. But uh, mm. how does it maintain a distance by becoming smaller? Yes, as I said, the sun radiates. And as it radiates, it loses in the form of energy uh, part of its mass equivalent to 4.6 million tons every second. The earth is losing that. No, no, the, no, sun. the sun, the sun, the sun, the sun, the sun, sun is losing. Okay. To keep the distance between mm. the earth and the sun at a fixed rate, mm. the earth has to lose uh, an equivalent amount, okay. not an equal amount, mm. a proportional yeah. amount. A proportional amount. So, and uh, so that uh, the distance can remain fixed, uh, because uh, you see the gravitational pull between the sun and the earth is governed by the two masses and the square of the distance in between. So that if you change the masses, you are bound to change the distance. Yes. And yes. We do not, yeah. Allah the distance fixed. Yani, mm. kept the distance fixed uh, throughout history. Yeah. You see, in, in such a uh, steadily and, and continuously changing universe, Allah has kept the distance between the earth and the sun steadily fixed. And that's why the Quran reads, in Allah, ithna ashra shahran, fi kitab Allah, Verily, the number of the months in the year, says in the book of Allah, and uh, in the in Allah, 12 months. In the book of Allah, on the, on the moment, he has created uh, the heavens and the earth. So this verse indicates that that distance remained always constant. How can it remain constant if the sun is radiating? We need its radiation. You see, the earth has to lose a proportional uh, quantity. And this is it's mass. mass. It's losing a mass. In mass, yes. And of course, shrinking in, in volume as well. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and there, is a, there is, I read that on the day of, Yom, uh, of, of judgment, that will be a mile away from the sun. The, a the, minor? A, a mile. A mile away. Mile away. One mile away. Judgment, yes. yes. But I again uh, warned you, <laughs> <laughs> don't indulge into <laughs> Akhira. Okay, okay, yes. Akhira yes. is completely has in the domain of the unseen. It has its own and it has got its own laws. Mm -hmm. Well, I was thinking that there would be some vast change on the day of Yom al Qiyamah that we can't. Everything, can't, everything because, will change, yes. Yeah, because we are you see, once we are now. resurrected, uh, we will go into a completely different. Uh, form and shape and uh, that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was joking with an elderly lady mm -hmm. <laughs> and they told her 
no old person will interpretize. <laughs> she started crying. <laughs> and then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi told her because everybody will be resurrected in the best of age, the best of shape, yes. and the best of form he would ever aspire for. Subhanallah. Even yeah. when he jokes the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he never he says, says the truth. He never says the truth. He never says uh, but the truth. But the truth. Subhanallah. Yes. Yeah. Subhanallah. Professor Zaghlul, yes. you said that we cannot measure the reduction that happens in the earth. Yes. But uh, isn't there a method? Because we can measure exactly the, reduction, uh, the radiation that comes from the sun. Yes. You said that it loses 4.6? 4.6 million tons. Million tons. Yes. Uh, can we calibrate? Oh, oh, it can be calibrated, yes, definitely. Okay. But uh, it cannot be measured. Mm. Yes, but, it, so, but it is so calibrated. Yes, so they can, say can be calibrated, yes. We approximately because lose how much we land. we know the age of the sun, uh, you see. And if you know the age of the sun and... Uh, uh, multiply that age by 4.6 uh, million tons, you can ca calculate how much the sun has lost. Yes. And if you can calculate how much the sun has lost, you can easily get how much the earth has lost. Mm. Okay. Because we have a fixed uh, which uh, is relationship. The distance. Yes, yes, fixed relationship. But you're saying also that the earth expels matter in order to maintain this distance from the sun. Uh, yes. Expel yes. it to where? Yes. yes. You both are engineers, you should know this <laughs> better than me. <laughs> Doctor, uh, all these meanings uh, can be understood from, this, from these two verses, correct? Yes. I'm just wondering again, and this is my, always, this is my question that I always ask all the time, actually. Um, like, uh, what exactly, what was exactly the translation or the explanation of these two verses that the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Understood. Yes, exactly. He's a historian, oh, yeah. so you have to be careful. <laughs> he always asks this question. <laughs> he tries to pull us always into his <laughs> history. Yes. Uh, you see, the, 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 as I okay. said earlier, mm -hmm. the two explanations given to these two verses, mm -hmm. uh, one uh, was explained on the basis of the loss uh, of uh, scholars, or particularly religious scholars, Muslim scholars, uh, and mass. Mm -hmm. um, the other one re reflects on the uh, gain or loss mm -hmm. of land uh, during struggle in I the course of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Professor Zaghloul, and we have come to the end of this episode. And thank you, our dear guests. Thank you for your time. Thank you, dear viewers. And inshallah, till next episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.